George, a Florida fan by his avatar, says, if I was a Miami fan, I wouldn't be worried about anything. I either trust Manny or you don't. But don't change your mind every couple of weeks. Come on, get real. I, I'm not off of Manny Diaz being the head coach. I know there's a response to a couple of people who said, you know, Manny Diaz is in trouble in the comments. He's responding to that. But I don't care about the labor pains. I want to see the baby. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to hear about, oh, Flor or my, uh, North Carolina only had a 31% um, chance to win by all these metrics post-game. Like, they weren't supposed to win that game. I don't care. They did win the game. You know? And a wise man once said, you play to win the games. So while there are things to enjoy, while there are things that you look forward and say, Jaron Williams completing 75% of his passes, Pro Football Focus has him at an adjusted completion percentage based upon distance of throw and situation at 85.1%. Yo, that's awesome. I am excited about that. I do think that Manny Diaz is can be a good coach. I do think that Manny Diaz needs to do some things better. I think that operationally, we did see some progress from the first game to the second game. We didn't have any false starts. I think we only had one holding penalty, again, negating another big Cam Harris run. But... I'm not off of Manny Diaz as the head coach, but yet and still, you got to win games, period. Point blank.com in the story. I don't care. 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 So don't sit. I mean, yeah. And maybe some of the people in the comments and some people in the chat, maybe they're going a little bit hard on that, but you need to have a positive result. And a positive result in the game of football is winning the game. Come hell or high water. If people want to go back to 2017, and Mark, we talked about this every single week, squeaking by. Miami was only up seven to three at half or seven to six at half at North Carolina in 2017. Came out of the half, hit Jeff Thomas over the top for 72, took a 14-6 lead and never looked back. That uh Georgia Tech game when we hit Daryl Langham lying on his ass for that catch, that uh bobble ball, tip, tip ball, get out of there, 25-24 win. Florida State that same year, all these things that are just by the skin of our teeth. Look. We could overlook, and a lot of people did overlook, a lot of glaring issues. Why? Because you won. So here, I'm not going to sit here and ignore issues because we lost. So in all this stuff, I say all that to say there are things to like. There are things not to like. But the thing that I'm most displeased with is the fact that Miami stands 0-2 after two games. And with only a seven-point aggregate margin, losing by four to um, Florida, losing by three to um, North Carolina, look – I get that Miami's close, but close ain't what we're about. You know what I'm saying? Like, again, if this was New Mexico State, 7-11 and 11 in the last 18 overall, which is the record in the last 18 games, go and look it up. 7-11 and 11 overall for a team that's been moribund for 20 years. Sure, that's fine. 2-7 and seven in the last nine? What? What? Like, this is the University of Miami Hurricanes. This is not good enough. So I come back to the point that we have to win games, regardless of the optics, regardless of what looks good and Jaren taking a step forward and the running backs doing the, I don't care if we don't win games, all that's for naught. There is a difference, obviously, when the head coach is a first year head coach versus maybe a third or fourth year head coach. So I'll take Butch Jones at Tennessee, for an example, recruited great, started to field teams that people were projecting preseason to be really good. And then he had a season one in particular in which they lost at the gun to, to an Oklahoma team that made the playoffs, Arkansas when they were good and somebody else, Florida. Yeah. And the Felipe Franks, Hail Mary. And when, when you go through that once or maybe go through that a second time, you can say, OK, the, the, the program's much better. We can see it on the field. It's obvious they're competing against teams that they haven't compete, competed against in years but the result's not what we want, but but we can see the building blocks. And then when we comes like third or fourth year, then that's when you say, okay, enough's enough. And obviously this coach can't get it done, but we're through two games with Manny. So obviously he's building a culture and a program and implementing his system on both sides of the ball in different ways. So I, I take the close losses as being somewhat of a positive but if this was next year, I wouldn't. I know it's not a positive. I know there are no moral victories. But in evaluating a coach and a new program, it's different than if you're still doing this in year three. I agree. And there is also the point to be made that the schedule still lines up 
favorably. Now, the thing about that is North Carolina was one of those teams in a full scale rebuild that everybody counted as a win. So how favorable is it really if a team that, come on, come on, let's be real now. Everybody saw Miami beating North Carolina. North Carolina even saw Miami beating North Carolina. And then they get that win. Whoa. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, does it look better than getting blown out 35 to 3? Sure. Fine. I'm not going to debate that. But, I mean, good is not good enough. Close is not okay. We're not playing hand, hand grenades or horseshoes. We're not. We're playing football. And I'm not about close. I'm not about almost. I'm not about you, know, you got to win. And obviously this team is back to a point where they're struggling to figure out how to do that. And that needs to change quickly.